Hi, KG7HSN here. Uh, the name is Jeff, and I'm going to show you how to use WSJ uh, T-X uh, for JT65 operation. Just this, this is a super, super high level um, demonstration showing you how to use this. Down here in the bottom right in the corner, I have the webcam. You can see me in the reflection. Um, you've also got my rig, which I have set right now is 14.076.00. This is kind of the default de facto location for the 20 meter band. Um, I'm using a Kenwood TS850S. Um, I am also using a signal link. The signal link is plugged into the mic jack and then the phone's jack also goes back into the signal link. The signal link then connects to my computer via a USB cable. Um, it's also running, you can't really see this very well, but it does say upper sideband right there. And I have set my auto tuner, uh, just kind of basic regular settings. I have my mic gain and my power set very, very, very low as well. Um, so I can go ahead and tune up, make sure uh, things are good there. So we're ready to go there. Now over on FL Digi, uh, what we're going to do or not FL Digi, excuse me, over on uh, uh, this program over here. Let's go ahead and switch back over to this view. <clears throat> uh, what, what we're seeing right here is I've got this set up. Right now it thinks that we're on 40 meters. This is not true. So I'm going to go ahead and change to the band that we're actually on. Uh, right down here in this drop-down menu, here's 20 meters. And it shows 14 uh, megahertz, right? 14.076 megahertz. So we're going to go ahead and select here. Now this waterfall should start to reflect actual accurate data. Right now it's not. This is when it was uh, set up or computed incorrectly. Just really fast, let's go ahead and go into the file and then into the settings. Here's where you're going to set your call sign and your grid. Um, I have enabled Runaway TX Watchdog. So this is if you're calling CQ over and over and over again. No one's coming back to you. You get up, go to the bathroom or microwave something, some food, and you forget. It'll uh, kick it off for you automatically. Um, that's kind of one of the other settings. I do not, and I am not using rig control in this demo, in this demonstration. Uh, audio control. This is really, really important. As I said with that signal link, uh, if you come back here and you look, this is plugged in into the signal link. The signal link is plugged into my computer via the USB cable. Inside of the signal link is basically a v or excuse me, a, another audio card, right? And uh, so what we're doing is it has added another audio device. Well, in my case, it happens to be this three uh, USB audio codec. This number will actually uh, keeps incrementing every time I change which port, uh, which USB port it is in, but just as a heads up. Um, you can see the other inputs, you can see my uh, webcam, you can see the built-in, etc. So you're going to want to leave these and set these up uh, specifically for your signal link, so that way it's only using that. You can go and edit TX, TX macros, you can, um, uh, you can even enable PSK reporting and spotting. Uh, here's kind of the default list of the various different uh, methods, whether it's JT9, JT65. Uh, over here is the, the different colors. So if there's a brand new call that I haven't worked before, uh, it's going to show up down here. If it's a DX call and it's like Australia or Japan or Switzerland or something like that, it's going to show up in this darker pink call. Uh, when I log the QSO down here, it will actually change it if if, it, if a call comes back and I've worked them before, it's just going to show uh, this color right here instead. Um, the, over here, right here, if they are replying and they're coming back to me, then it's going to turn into this darker color. And if it is yellow, then that means that is what I am sending to them. So there's a quick cr crash course for you right now. I'm only doing JT65. Uh, basically, from 0 to about 2,500 is going to be a JT65. Above that is typically, and so you can see a couple of actually JT9 signals here. Uh, in fact, actually, if we were to switch here, uh, it adds a little blue marker kind of indicating and designating that as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go back. 
super, super confusing interface when you first lo uh, look into it. You think, oh my goodness, what in the world am I looking at? Uh, single click erase clears this, double click erases all of this. Um, for those of you that don't know how this operates, what happens is you have, it starts right at the bottom of the minute. So it is really, really, really important for your uh, time to be synced. I'm going to go ahead and actually sync my time. Um, so I've gone ahead and pulled up internet time, change settings, uh, update to time.mist.gov, update now. And it says it's successful, so okay. So I'm good there. Uh, right now, I just received this signal. So W4IMD is calling a DX signal, so he's, or he's calling for DX. Uh, his signal is minus 14 dB. His time is off by uh, 0 0.2 seconds. He is also transmitting at about 1200 hertz above the point of the origin or 14.076. So he's at uh, 14.077.206. So you can actually see him about right here. So that's where, that's him right here, uh, it looks like. So that should give you kind of just a quick idea. In fact, actually, I could even change the receive down. So now I'm exactly on here. Uh, in another video, I showed this kind of how this works just really fast. Basically, here's the value for receiving. Here's the value for transmitting. That's indicated up here. Green is receive. X is transmit. So say I wanted, I just dialed on him, dialed in on him. Say I wanted to set my transmit as well. This is saying take the receive value and apply it in the transmit, vice versa. Set the set the receive value, take the or take the transmit value and set it as the receive value. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it over here. Uh, here's another uh, person that's just called CQ uh, at 17:19 Zulu time with minus 16. That's kind of getting down in there. Anything more than about two or three seconds <clears throat> doesn't seem to really work very well. Uh, this is kind of your sensitivity. It's actually going to turn it down a little bit. I don't want to be picking up signals that are so far out there that I there's no way that they're ever going to hear me. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. So anyways, uh, what I have now is I've basically got everything set up to be able to do some operation here. I've got QRZ ready so I can look up uh, pictures form. Oh, just to show you right now, because I'm selected on this receive frequency uh, on here, it actually showed up here because uh, uh, I'm receiving within this window. So you can actually see where he popped up because it uh, received the message here. So anyways, it goes in, in a minute increments. As I was saying before, it starts at zero. It will, you transmit or they will transmit for about 47 seconds. So it will go for 47 seconds. That's what these lines are for. That uh, shows everything in between. Um, this is for, if I was calling CQ, uh, it would only transmit on the even numbers. So if I were to enable transmission right now, it would not show it. Um, versus if I were to uh, select this and press transmit, it'd actually start right now. It'd be really late to the game and they wouldn't be able to decode you. Okay, so here it just selected this. So now it's going to update and decode. You can see we're, we received two new messages, right, in that odd minute. And here you have just enough time that you need to hurry and figure out what you want to do and select and start sending your message. And at the top of the minute, at zero, 00, it will start transmitting your new message. So it is kind of fun because you have to be kind of quick, um, but this will help you out. So basically, at, say I wanted to reply to this guy, I double click him. It put him over here. It would automatically move the transmit and receive to his location, and it would pre-fill his call sign right here. It has my call sign and my grid square right here. It would select this one, and um, this is a setting that you actually have to do in here. But you can you can click it so that when you double click here, it will automatically enable transmit. Um, I have set that. I prefer it. Um, it will also automatically update what their signal strength is. R stands for Roger. This is Roger, 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 uh, 73s. And you can go back. Um, so hopefully this is going to give you a little bit of a good idea. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a CQ first. I'm going to come down here a little bit further where there's nobody. Dial in, it's just some right on frequency. 
Um, it's an odd right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stay on odd, because, or excuse me, I want to go to even because I want it to be at 24. I'm going to enable DX, and I have the CQ KG7HSN selected. Um, now this is the really, really important part. I've turned down my, uh, you don't want to burn up your radio, because it is going to be transmitting continuously for essentially 50 seconds. Um, and you don't want to be doing that on high power, especially if your radio is not going to really be able to support that. So, um, as it goes ahead and it starts to transmit, which it's going to do here in nine seconds, I've already got the mic gain turned uh, to the spot that it roughly should be, so the ALC will be spot on. Um, looks like it needs to be turned up a little bit. The power needs to be turned down. So now I'm at uh, 10 watts. Or excuse me, nope. Still want to climb up there. So I'm now at about 15 watts. There we go. And I'm going to turn up the ALC. So it's just right spot, dead even, Steven. So that can cycle through. Show the SWR is pretty much a one to one. Um, ALC is dead on. Power is probably actually about 12, 15, somewhere in around there. Now, one thing that you're going to notice as, that it, as it is transmitting, and you can see that when I uh, changed this, it, it moved everything over here. It is not refreshing the waterfall anymore, not while I'm transmitting. So it's going to receive the end here, it finishes and it ends. And now we're going to go ahead back into receiving mode. Um, the enable TX button, it's not going to do anything because I've told it to only transmit on even uh, minutes. So now we're going to, for this whole odd minute, we're going to essentially uh, wait and watch now. And it doesn't look like anyone's coming back to us. Uh, if you, if they were, you'd be able to see it in the waterfall here. Um, but if, if say someone, say, uh, say my friend uh, KB7KP, who's also in, or I, I don't think he's in BN40. I think he might be in like BN41 or something like that, right? Um, say, say he were to come back, right? For some reason, what I could do is I could say, "Hey, you know, look, your signal's uh, 15 or whatnot," but that's not the case. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try calling CQ again. But anyways, that gives you kind of an idea as to how that works. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull up this guy and see everywhere that I was seen. So I was seen in Nebraska and then Tennessee. Um, so you can see 14.076.800, which is right exactly where we did it. The uh, JT65, he's got a really, really, really poor weak signal of me on me, so it's super, super uh, low. Um, this guy, uh, he read me just a little bit off, but I was actually a stronger signal for him all the way out here. So uh, we can go ahead and come back to this guy. And again, you can see what's going on here. I've got the ALC. Um, maybe it might be a little bit higher than what it should be, but around just a little over 10 watts. Again, I use the mic, uh, the mic gain to control that and then the power as well. You can also use it on the signal link as well to control it. But that is pretty much it in a nutshell. So hopefully that helped and uh, it will get you started to being able to uh, do JT65. And also that's kind of the same thing as well. It does the same principle with uh, the JT9 um, and all of that. So, so 73 and hope you enjoyed it.